My name is Trevor Foster. I'm an artist originally from Seattle, but I've been living and working in Thailand for the last eight years. I've set up a studio in, in Chiang Mai and um, I've worked with local craftsmen and worked on my own art there. And I've created this work now that I'm displaying for my first time in, in Bangkok. It's a collection of work that I've been working on for the last three years straight. Uh, so ever since COVID, and um, I'm really happy to display it here at SAC. Is a vessel of desires. The concept behind that was everything is coming together in one vessel. The vessel, I think, is, is ceramic, and then everything is within that vessel. And I've also played with the concept of ceramic and its fragility and its point in history as, as something that is susceptible to damage and it can never really go back to the original state. That's the way I kind of thought with a lot of this traditional craft that it might be on the precipice of being lost and it's very hard to pick up the pieces if it, if it falls. Each piece is kind of a form of desire. Um, each piece I was playing around with different philosophical and moral concepts um, and then also traditional means. So desire for me is something maybe valuable or, or something that you put a lot of time and attention into. And so yeah, the concept of, of desire is just something that unites all of these pieces. This uh, show has a variety of, of different imagery that I, I kind of think of as archetypal. So things that are cross-cultural, um, things like a tortoise represents. Uh, a lot of these uh, pieces are things that I thought would connect uh, to everyone on some kind of a primal level. So the skull, like the vessel, is a symbol of death and decay, typically. And I thought with the traditional crafts that I've blended in here, the skull is something that's it's representation that, that this thing could go away or that it's fragile. And the skull on ceramic is an image that is incredibly fragile. So by blending traditional crafts with the skull, it's, it's a kind of warning that this thing could be, could be lost. So each piece, I, I hope, kind of interacts with each other. I made them all separately over a period of time and, and some of them in different countries, but I tried to kind of set up things that form a dialogue with each other. You can move through the space and you're being looked at while you look at the pieces. So there are 52 pieces in this show. Uh, I made things in Japan, in Thailand, in Nepal, in China, in the US. So it's a little bit of everything from everywhere. They're all in, in one space here in, in Bangkok. I think about a combination of craftsmanship and history. In history, people tended to have a lot more attention to detail. And to me, I think like an attention to detail is it's a kind of testament to how much you care about something. It takes a lot of time and, and energy in order to create something with a lot of detail and also connect to historical craftsmanship. It's a way to kind of have a conversation conversation with the, with the past and, and learn from the past and experience the technique firsthand. Every piece has a different technique. Um, the skulls behind me, for instance, are a traditional Thai ceramic technique um, that's slowly being lost to time. Uh, I was fortunate enough to work with these old Bencherong masters in other provinces outside of Bangkok and the Kampathom and Chiang Mai and I was able to work alongside with these old uncle guys and really dig in deep to this traditional craft that I, I think will probably won't survive another decade. Um, and so for me, it was really exciting to work with them. And even though we couldn't communicate perfectly, it was something that we could share and, and develop these. I see Thailand as it's very exciting. I, I'm from Seattle and I feel like Seattle is kind of a little bit stale. It's not exciting to me. Like, um, you know, it's, it's this kind of tech place where Thailand just seems like it's burgeoning with energy and it's just ready to break out. And there's a lot of really talented craftspeople here. Like from what I can see, the, the skill is very high. The concept is quite good, kind of energy in the air that I'm really excited to be a part of. Well, I'm always an outsider here, but I think like I'm kind of accepted for being an outsider and I felt like an outsider back home in Seattle. Even as an outsider, I feel like I've been accepted and I've made it into the art community here in Thailand and, and I, I've been very grateful for that. Some people have brought up the idea of cultural appropriation, but for me, I, I'm not sure I really believe in the concept as it's done in earnest. So by 
diving deep into traditional techniques or by learning things that um, are nearly forgotten. I have had nothing but um, overwhelming support from the craftsmen. Went out to study Bencherong. They were just really happy to share those techniques because I, I don't think people are quite interested in them. So yeah, I think it's my sentiment with it is very honest. So each piece uh, here, I've used a variety of media and um, each one, to me, I, I like learning about different techniques and each technique you can kind of work at a different flow and work with a different attention to detail and work in a different way. And it keeps it kind of fresh and exciting. And it also ties me to different communities and different um, craftsmen. So I, I seek out and learn from a variety of people and uh, by you working in different mediums, it just keeps it fresh. And then there's no rules. My thing is just the curiosity to connect to the past and to connect to some of these techniques and then some new or things that haven't been made before tend to be a result of that. So for me, like incorporating materials that have a history, it allows me to build on them and have a dialogue with, with the past and in the present. Finding unique objects and like not just working on a blank canvas, it has a kind of uniqueness built into it. And it also has a, a dialogue because rather than starting with a blank canvas, you're starting with some hundred year old piece or some screen from Japan and you're talking back and forth. It's not like a one way conversation with a, a blank canvas where you have to tell it what to do. It's kind of telling me what to do at the same time. I've been an artist since I was 18. I have never stopped making art. It's daily practice for me. Um, and it's just, it's incorporated into my life and slowly I've developed it over the years and it's taken all kinds of turns and gone down all kinds of paths. Some of them led places and some of them are dead ends, but I think I'll just keep going, keep going down the path and keep finding new adventures and keep finding ways to keep it fresh and interesting, finding craftsmen, finding little villages to work with and see if I can't create some things that will stand the test of time.